All right, now that we have three different choices of drawing techniques, why don't we start to think about how our system can choose what combinations it can draw? And we're gonna add a bunch more of those. Obviously, we haven't added all the stuff that you're seeing here, but I just wanna pause and kind of look at how this, where we're headed in, as far as how we might be able to build something a little bit more interesting. So we have circles, we have simple lines, and we have outline shape. With those three things, we should be able to build a, many different combinations of, of um, crystal. So how might we do that? Well, the answer is something that we've already done before. We're just going to use random and use that to decide what to draw. So let's call it uh, picker and let's set it to a random number between zero and one. And then let's just write some if statements. If the picker is greater than 0.3, so let's give ourselves a 70% chance that something is going to happen. We want to do something. Um, why don't we outline shape? Okay, cool. Let's run it again. Picker equals another random number between 0 and 1. No need to create a new variable here. We can just use the same one over and over. And we can do that, that again. If picker is greater than 0 point, I don't know, 5. Then let's do something else. Let's call it simple lines. So now we have a 70% chance that we will draw an outline shape. We have a 50% chance that a simple lines will get drawn and we have circles to deal with. So why don't we do one more and say that if picker is greater than 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.8, let's make it real rare. Then we're going to draw circles. And just like that, um, let's get rid of test lines because we don't need those. We have a system that should output some crystals for us. Now, unfortunately, um, we're not getting very interesting. Oh, there's an interesting thing we didn't think about. Our circles need no fill. So we're not getting a lot of very interesting combos here because we don't have a lot of options and because some of these rate, um, some of these rules are a little high. So I'm going to set them all down to 0.3 and let's see if we start to there we get some more combos you can even see those lines in here they're very small and great we have different color combinations um, great so we're starting to see how our design system can produce lots of a variety of results using very basic logic and only the random function what I'd like to do now is um, start thinking about how a lot of this stuff is repeated in all of our functions here. So num shapes is something that we see over and over again. Um, stroke color, stroke weight. How can we think about uh, creating a system using object-oriented programming that would cut down on this repetition and give us a system of inheritance? So you guessed it, this is the end of the beginner section and we're now heading in, into the intermediate section and we're going to be building classes uh, using the techniques of object-oriented programming.